This video is another in the experimental design section of the Higher Human course for problem solving. So this is question four from the 2019 paper. Now this one involves humans as well, so it's quite an interesting one to cover. Because um, the, the different variables that can affect them, or the, the different variables that need to be kept constant, can be a bit different to normal experimental ones that you would see with enzymes. So just the same as we'll always do with any kind of experimental design question is you highlight the importance of this and you highlight really important parts in this first blurb that they give you. Okay, so this experiment involves a protein supplement being used by people who take part in sport. So it's believed to increase muscle mass and therefore that improves um, any performance in sports activities. So an investigation was carried out to test if protein supplements improved the ability of the upper leg muscles to raise weights. So a class of 20 students were divided into two groups. The groups are balanced for age, gender, fitness level and body mass. So each student carried out in 10 weeks of training. Student A took protein and student B took the placebo. Or group A, sorry, took protein, group, a, uh, group B took the placebo. Now in unit 3 we'll talk about placebo. Um, the placebo is essentially just a a drug that replaces the actual drug that they're going to give, um, which actually has no effect. So it would look like and taste like, seem like the drug that the normal group were getting, um, but it would have no effect. So it could be a sugar pill that was made to look like it, or a saline solution that wouldn't affect them, or something that's just not going to have any effect. And that just proves that the actual experiment, the, the drug that they were trialling, or the protein supplements for example, are the things that cause the effect. So all students had their results recorded every two weeks, for 10 weeks by recording their maximum weight that they can lift. So it's asking for two additional variables, so two more variables, other than those described that would need to be controlled. So what you need to do is look at what they've told you already. They've got length of training. Okay, they've got the maximum weight they can lift. They've got every two weeks they're measured and then over a course of 10 weeks and they've got the size of the um, the 20 students. Okay, and they've also told you they've balanced it for age, gender, fitness level and body mass. So you can't really keep those the same. So think about what they've not told you. They've not told you anything about the supplement or the placebo. So they've not told you anything to do with the placebo or the supplement. So concentration, they'd have to keep the same. The volume or the mass, depending on how they're giving them it. Of the placebo or that supplement. Okay. Two. When you take that that medication, that drug or that placebo would make a difference. So if they take it with a meal in the morning, things like that, that can make a difference. So time of day. Now it can also make a difference when you exercise. So the time of day for exercise or taking the drug or the placebo. So taking either the placebo or the supplement. These can all have an impact. Okay, they've not told you anything about the supplement. So the brand or the type. Okay, different types of protein might contain different concentrations as well, so that's important. They've not told you that they've limited for any other exercise they might do. So these people might go for a run or they might do other kinds of exercise. So any other or additional exercise, they would have to keep that the same in the group or between the groups. Okay, they've not told you how many repetitions they do in that way. So they've not told you the number of times they lifted it or the intensity. So they're not telling the number of times the weight was lifted, the repetitions, the time between, or the time spent on it, okay, or the intensity. So I'm not going to write them all down, but those are the examples. Right, and sixth point we could talk about. They've not told you anything about any, any of the food or any other things that they've consumed. So the food that they would consume would have to be kept the same because that would then limit or increase how much protein they might store as muscle or they might convert it to muscle. 
They've not told you they've controlled for medicines a person might take. They might be on other um, steroid-based medicines and things which would affect them. Or any drugs that they might take or any other supplements that they consume. All these things could impact on their levels of muscle or their behaviour in this. And they've also not told you they've controlled for health issues. So some of these people might have health issues that might affect their ability to gain muscle mass. Or they've not told you about whether they smoke or not. Now that could affect it in terms of their ability to breathe and then their ability to obviously gain muscle. And different ethnicities will have different percentages of muscle fibre that we talk about in Unit 1. So ethnicity is not controlled in terms of their um, balance between the groups and therefore that may impact on it. So there's a huge number when it comes to an experimental design question that has people in it and also hasn't told you much about the actual concentrations of things. Okay, so the next part of this question covers some data and then asks you to draw a graph. Now again, it talks about a line graph. Now this line graph is worth three marks, which is not common in the past papers. And it's because they're asking you to show all the data in table one. Okay, now your mark, first of all, will be from your labels and your scales, like always. Okay, so the time in weeks is what is going to go on the x-axis. That is what is changing over the time. Okay, so your time in weeks is x-axis. And then you're going to have 0 through to 10. Okay. Your y-axis is what they're measuring. So they're measuring the average maximum weight raised in kilograms. So on your y-axis, is your average maximum weight raised in kilograms. Okay, and then the values for that, your lowest value is 50. And your highest value is 95. So you really want to start with your lowest value and then go up to roughly about your highest value. So if you started at zero and went up to 100, you would use only around half, well, slightly less than half of your scale. So don't always start your scales at zero. This one can start at your lowest value. So that'd be 50. And then if we've got the divisions of 10, and get up to 100 for that, which should reach your highest point of 95 and just be above that. So this is one mark for your scales and your labels. The next mark is for plotting your points and the final mark is for making sure that you know which one is which and having a scale, um, having a key for that. Okay, so person A, if you plot them, um, that'd be 52. Seven, sixty-four, seventy-two, eighty-six, and then ninety-five. Okay. So again, plot the points and join in them, the center of each point together. Now I've used crosses for this one, so what I could do is then use a cross for my key and then say that this is person A, brackets the protein supplement. Now I still have to plot the other part of that data, so I still have to do person, or group B, sorry, which is the placebo. Okay, now this is shown groups. Now the next person, the next group, sorry, is at zero, they are at 50. Okay, then the next one at two, they're at 55. Notice how I'm using dots for this now. Four is then at 60. And um, six is at 68. Eight is at 74. And then 
and 10 is 80. So again, join your dots or join your points. And then have some way of showing your key. So here's two dots joined by a line. And this would be group B, and group B is on the placebo. Now to really confirm that you are showing which one is which, you can highlight these as well just to show them. So A is a protein supplement, and this is this high line here. B is your lower line, with the dots shown clearly. Okay, so it's one mark for your key, which is here. One mark for plotting your points for both lines, and then one mark for your scale and your labels. Okay, next question then. State the conclusion that these uh, can be drawn from these results. Now your conclusion has got to be related to your aim. So if we go back to what our aim was. The investigation was carried out to test if protein supplements improve the ability of the upper leg muscles to raise weights. This is your aim. So the effect of protein supplements and their ability to improve the upper leg muscles' ability to raise weights. So if we look at the people that had the protein supplement, the group that had the protein supplement, you have to make a statement about that. So protein supplements which is what they're investigating. Then if you see the higher line above this, obviously improved their ability to increase their maximum lift and weight. So it improved their ability to raise weights. Okay, now you could also phrase this as saying that allowed the students to lift heavier or more weights because they are lifting a greater weight and greater maximum weight every time that they lift. Okay, but you have to relate that conclusion to the aim. Okay, now this is quite an extended question, so we'd still have some more. So the question for the next part is suggest. So again, like I've told you, suggest is an A style question. It's asking you to link, to apply your knowledge and suggest a reason for the increase in performance in group B. So group B, they have a placebo effect, right? Now we'll talk about that in unit three, a placebo effect is just basically you thinking that you're gonna improve and therefore you do improve. So some cancer treatments that they trial, um, cancer treatment, um, the cancer patients that get that placebo will go into remission in some sense and will perhaps have their tumor shrink just due to the simple belief that they are getting the drug that would then help cure them. So this can be also the case here that because they believe they might be getting the drug, the protein supplement, sorry, they would therefore then push themselves harder and be able to increase their maximum weight. But you might know yourself, when it comes to exercise, the more you exercise and the more you practice something, the better you get at it. Okay? So for this experiment, training for these people or repeated use of the apparatus or repeated use of weights can all then contribute to that group B getting better over time. But you can also accept the placebo effect because that would have an impact on it. Okay, the final question or the final part of this question is part C. So it's asking you about the average body mass. So we're stating that the average body mass and the percentage of body fat of the students was measured at the start of the investigation and after 10 weeks. So it gives you the information in table two. Okay. So this is the body mass for A and body mass for B. So sometimes with these tables, it's easier to highlight them to show the difference and to kind of keep yourself right in terms of values. So mass is in green and then body fat is in orange. So the question is asking, use the data, right? So this information here that you have been given, use the data to explain why taking protein supplements resulted in a greater increase in muscle mass. So 
first of all, you've got to look at the results and what you've seen. So, Group A. Okay, they had a greater increase in body mass. Okay, than Group B did. What you can also say is, they actually lost more fat than Group B did. Okay, so Group A had a greater increase in body mass okay, compared to Group B. Okay, you could also say um, lost more fat. Okay, this will give you one mark. The next point then is that that change must be due to what they were given. The fact is that they've been given this protein supplement and the group B did not. Okay, so that change must be due to what they've been given in this experiment. Okay, so change must be due to that muscle. So they've gained that muscle, so therefore it must be due to that muscle. Or the supplement might be used to make muscle, which is what the idea is. And that's why their mass is increased. Okay, or because they've lost body fat but they've gained mass, it's implied that that loss of body fat is converted into muscle. Okay, so it suggests the body fat is converted into muscle. Okay, and that is what's allowing them to increase their ability to um, push weights. Okay, and that finishes off question four from 2019.